Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a DSP engineer in Slate Digital Friends here in Grenoble. And me and my team, we worked on the SDP1, the latest uh, vintage equalizer that is part of the virtual mix rack. So the SDP1 is an emulation of a vintage equalizer from the 50s. And like any of the equalizer from the 50s, it is a passive equalizer followed by push-pull amplifier to compensate for the losses that happen in the equalization circuit. As opposed to modern equalizers, the bands uh, of, the, of the equalizer are not separated by buffers. This means that each band will have an influence on the others. And that's what we call the interactions between the filtering bands. So to model those, we measured the equalizer from the outside and we also took a very deep model of the electronic circuit that is inside the equalizer. And by measuring and modeling the, the equalizer alongside the measurements that we made from the output of the equalizer, we were able to model the precise characteristics of the equalizer circuit. So we were able to reproduce very accurately with the infamous base trick that happens when on the equalizer, you would do both boosting and cutting the low frequencies at the same time. Like any equalizer this age, the original hardware has its limitations. The frequencies are limited. You can only choose specific frequencies, but you cannot change this frequency continuously like you could do in a more modern hardware. Fortunately, being in the digital world, we are able to do anything we want. So we asked ourselves the questions, if the equalizer were to have more frequencies, how would they sound? And we tweaked our model of the electrical schematic and we are able to add interpolated frequencies that sound exactly like the original hardware would sound if it were to have those additional frequencies. Like all analog hardware, the equalizer has its imperfection. This means saturation and harmonics created by the nonlinear components in the electrical circuit. The equalizer was designed to be as transparent as possible. This results in a very subtle saturation that is very easy to redo. Fortunately, at Slate Digital, we have this history of modeling analog hardware and we were able to build upon this legacy by using models of tubes and transformers that we designed for other hardware, such as the FG2A, we are able to tweak them and approach as much as possible the sound of the original hardware.